Thank you. Well, uh, my intervention focuses on the involvement of men in care work of adult dependent people, long-term care, in the context of the care crisis and the economic crisis. The care crisis is especially linked this, the care crisis is especially linked to an aging of aging that increases care needs. On the other hand, the economic crisis and the austerity policies have led to higher rates of unemployment and poverty, worst by reduced services and benefits for long-term care. Women have the most important role in caring. I suggest that this twofold crisis is forcing some men to involve in caregiving in family settings. My argumentation is linked to the current qualitative and interdisciplinary research into the subject that I uh, are conducting in Catalonia, in Spain. Caring for, uh, you have here the, the situation of, of the economic crisis and um, unemployment and so. Uh, caring for adults differs from caring for children in both motivation and commitment to care. Caring in childhood is associated with growth and life. It's very well valued socially and it's regarded as an investment in the future. In contrast, long-term care, especially for elderly people, is associated with negation and loss and is regarded as an economic and social burden. While some men may be motivated to care for children by its connotation of modernity and its association with ideals of equality between men and women, caring for dependent adults is a response to the circumstances that demand in. An important challenge today is precisely how to involve men in long-term care. Uh, the gender perspective is essential to our research. Men who become involved in caring cross gender boundaries and have to negotiate gender with their function as care providers. Doing gender, gender as performance, led us to analyze the specific behaviors and practices used to establish a gender identity in particular situations. Masculinities are not homogeneous, as Connell and Mr. Mitch insisted. It's interesting to explore if the hegemonic ideal is maintained or it is displaced in a context where males are engaged in non-traditional activities. Male caregiving in long-term care situations is a special salient field to analyze it. Reciprocity linked to the sense of obligation is present in family care. This dimension reveals the importance of kinship neglected in the academic literature on care, which takes it for granted and naturalizes it. Family obligations are inequally distributed among people who share the same kinship ties, uh, showing precisely that it's not sufficient to be kin, but to do kinship. Kinship, like gender, is a social and cultural product and, as a such, subject to social change. The involvement of men into long-term care allows us to reflect on the changes in the substance of gender, kinship and masculinity. I argue that these male caregivers that do not conform to the ideal of hegemonic masculinity does not threaten it. The, uh, the research questions and methodology, my aim is to explore the motives that prompt men to care in the context of economic crisis, fewer employment possibilities, growing family poverty, and diminished public resource. We also attempt to understand the interactions between gender and kinship and to identify situations in which gender boundaries uh, are surpassed and commitments deriving for, from kinship links become more relevant. In line with the above, we pose the following research questions. What is the male carer situation vis-a-vis -vis the labor market? What is the kinship typology of male carers? What motivates them to care for dependent adults? 
how they do masculinity. Uh, my, uh, my intervention is based on research carried out in Catalonia on men's participation in care work. The main research method used was open interviews together with observation and focused discussion groups. We draw uh, from 42 interviews, the reason for the dependency they are dealing with in their care tax include chronic illness and disabilities, mental disorders, and frail elderly. The largest group were husbands, followed by fathers and sons, but uh, we also came across brothers, sons-in-law, and grandsons. The economic crisis and falling investment in public policies to support long-term care, the Spanish dependency law, have brought about the refamiliarization of care. Women in the main, but also men, feel forced to deal with situations of, of, of dependencies in their immediate family settings due to the impossibility of accessing public resources and of paying for private resources themselves. On the other hand, in the context of economic crisis, people place much more importance of having a job. Labor activity takes on greater value, and as a consequence, people are less willing to give up their jobs than in times of fuller employment. Our findings show that families consider it more important for those in war to hold on to their jobs and for caregiving to be done by other family members, women or men, who have worse employment prospects or who are outside the labor market. Hence, if men lose their jobs and a need for care arises, then they take on his role rather than putting the women's job, jobs at risk. Who are the male carers of uh, families in family settings? It's interesting to reflect on which kinship categories most commonly lead men into caring roles. Husband carers, more, most of the men who care for people in the family settings are husbands of elderly wives affected by illness. These men are retired and therefore outside the labor market. They have been brought up in a patriarchal model of marital and gender relationships, and in their new role, they have to take on activities that they have never done before. I didn't know anything. I have uh, had learned to, uh, to learn everything, everything at the age of 80 uh, plus. Eh? It's a, 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 a said uh, one informant. The husband carers consider that the duty of care for wife mothers fall to them, not to their own children. And this is news. Conjugal kinship is therefore more blending than filial kinship in the attribution of care responsibilities. They insist that they do not want to be dependent of their children, who moreover they consider have their own employments and family obligations. However, in their narratives, they highlight the difficulty of care tasks and play down the help they receive both from their children and from paid helpers. In their accounts, gradually emerge women employed to clean the house, family social workers, daughters uh, who wash and iron the clothes, who invite their parents for lunch on Sundays, who take care of personal hygiene tasks, who oversee medication, or who accompany their parents to doctor's appointments. A network of resources often provided by the extended family, but also by institutions, organizations, or the market is activated around uh, the husband carer. This network of resources should be taken into account in any attempt to understand the care strategy in the family settings in long-term care. Second, father carers, adult people. We are ad with adult people. These carers are found especially in situations involving mental illness or uh, disabilities. Most of the father carers we interview are retired, sometimes having taken early retirements. For them, the parental bond is what drives them to do kinship. 
they take on the greater caring role, even when there is a woman, wife, mother, who shares some of the care tasks, which are often very intensive and are likely to go on beyond the parents' own lifetimes. As in the case of husband carers, fathers also insist that their other children should be free from this kind of care responsibilities. The son carers. In the new family models, the link that has undergone the greatest transformation is that between independent adult sons and their elderly parents. In intergenerational households, commonplace just uh, 50 years ago, are only contemplated when the parents lose their autonomy and when institutionalization or professional home care resources are unavailable. In these situations, the crisis of the female-driven model of care is most visible, situations for which society has not devised an alternative model. The sons care about their parents, not care for the, their parents. The, the differentiation is important. Uh, the uh, sons' approach involves combining their own care with a range of different resources, day centers, lunch groups, all people's home, people employed to provide care in the home, especially when these men are in active employment and have their own family obligations. The people interviewed who are caring for their relatives express a feeling of moral obligation towards those they are looking after. This obligation is shaped both by the strict need of carrying out certain tasks in a practical sense and by the emotions that drive them to do them. The members of a kinship group, a family unit, are related, but to build this relation, they must do kinship. And the informants often naturalize the care as a reality that is unquestionably associated to kinship. Caring is associated with a set of activities, attitudes, and emotions that are taken on from a position of reciprocity. The members of a family give care, receive care, and return care in a circuit of general reciprocity in which any notion of compensation for gifts received is not openly expressed. This is what Salins has called mutuality of being, of how it is that relatives live each other's life and die each other's death. The motives for caring are expressed in terms of kinship in the sense of the obligation that creates mutuality and the sense of family reciprocity. And care is one of the most appreciated most valuable gifts. Emotions and feelings are in depth in the obligation to care. They form part of it. So, too, do the personal conflicts and doubt over the possibility of escaping from the responsibility that, in the words of one of our informants, bleeds dry the person that is doing this kind of caring. People we interview emphasize some dichotomizing generalizations about gender. They seem to recognize that female traits have emerged in them as a result of the caregiving process, as their capacity to learn and to do housework and care. They recognize that women have inner qualities that make them better caregivers than men. But it's interesting to remark that some men do not recognize themselves as caregivers. I am not a caregiver, said to me one informant. She's my wife. I give back what she uh, ha has been doing for me and our children many years. I am who I am thanks to him, uh, his father, and I have to pay back it. She cared for me uh, when I was a baby. Nowadays she needs me it's my obligation as a son. Fairness and responsibility, reciprocity and moral obligations are often invoked as a reason to provide care to aging parents or spouses. And this can be seen as a way these males do masculinity. Anyway, 
this his protective role is cons consistent with a hegemonic masculinity. Male caregivers feel that women care because they are innately nurturing. They do an implicit contrast between themselves, who provide care because of a rational commitment of duty and reciprocity, and female caregivers who provide care because of an internal or natural predisposition. To do masculinity dis disassociating themselves from women with that emphas emphasis on reason and rational duty that have been seen as one feature of the hegemonic masculinity. The different experiences of men suggest that it may be important to understand the intersectionality between masculinity and social class. Men with a more affluent status care about their spouses or their parents using the different uh, public or private care services, but they don't care for them. They don't do directly the caregiving task. To conclude, I have analyzed the impact of the crisis of caring and the economic crisis on the incorporation of some men in long-term care. Men who care for other adults in the family settings are mainly outside the labor market. Retired men, unemployed men, and others who have left poorly paid jobs. In times of crisis, men take on the caring role when women cannot do so, especially if the women are working and in better paid jobs. We have shown that the refamiliarization of caring and the increased value accorded to employment favors the incorporation of men into family care roles. In addition, the lack of care resources reactivates the sense of obligation deriving from kinship links. Care is not interwoven only with gender roles, but also, I insist, with kinship. In the context in which social changes, the crisis of care, and the economic crisis are compounded, the protective role of kinship is reactivated and gender roles take second place. This was not the case a few, year, a few years ago. For example, uh, in the filial relationship, it was the daughter or the daughters-in-law uh, and not a son who did caring. Nowadays, it's not like this, where caring was concerned, being a woman some years ago prevailed above any beyond and any kinship link. Today, it's the kinship link that engenders the, pre the principal relationship of duty. These changes in the role of gender and kinship in caring show that relational and contextual dimensions matter, and not only the substance of the links. It's not enough to be kin. One has to do kinship. Social and cultural conditions oblige certain links to mobilize and reshape the forms of care based on moral obligations, reciprocity, mutuality, and affection, which are not without their tensions, contradictions, and conflicts. Our research reveal also the invisibility of men as caregivers in long-term care <coughs> situations, because the difficulties to recognize the informal caregiving in general and the difficulties of men to recognize themselves as caregivers. They cross the gender roles and do things that are quite unmale. However, they are not confronted with their masculinity. They insist that they are committed to do what is necessary. Their vision of masculinity is based on a strong emphasis that they care in a different way from the caregiving provided by women that is seen as deriving from a natural predisposition. The evidence confirms that the existence of alternative visions of masculinity doesn't thus displace the vision of masculinity that is hegemonic. If we think in terms of social justice of gender, I would like to think I would like to think that giving visibility to these men involved in long-term care may contribute to show that men can do 
all kinds of caring activities, and they, they can do it in a very efficient way. Caring is not a natural predisposition of women, but a capacity acquired and susceptible to be redistributed. Thank you very much.